Master and KineMaster is back because KineMaster 7 brought exactly what I wanted, which is keyframe everything, and I'm gonna show you how to do it in this video. What is it? Look at things changing in the background, like colors and effect settings over time. This did not used to be able to be done in KineMaster, but now you can. I'm gonna show you how. If you wanna find out, like, subscribe, and follow me on the other side. KineMaster. Very important, keyframes only work on layers. So we duplicate our clip as a layer and that will bring it up, but we need to transform it, find the transform button, find the two size buttons at the bottom, which will bring it to the right side and you're ready to keyframe. Not every layer property can be keyframe, but adjustment or the changes in color, contrast, saturation, and things like that can be. So we'll start with that. The keyframe button's in the left column. It becomes active when you move the timeline. It's a circle with a plus there. Scroll to where you want your first change, hit the button, and you'll see in your layer there's a blue dot. You've added a keyframe. In this example, I'm making the video go from color to black and white over a period of time. So I set the video to negative 100 saturation here at the key point. Now watch as I scroll over time, the saturation setting changes automatically as programmed by KineMaster. The first point is where you started at zero and it ends up at negative 100 with our keyframe. Now in this example, we're going to change the color five different times so you can see that you're not limited to one or two keyframes. You can just move your timeline along, drop keyframes in there, make the changes, and it's automatically going to program between them. And so you get this color change stinger that looks just like this. Let's keyframe a couple more properties. I've keyframed opacity in this checkbox so it becomes in and out over time. Now I want to show you how we can edit that. So in order to edit the keyframes, you need to click on the property itself and then you'll see the keyframe in there and levels going up and down. If you look down here at the bottom, there's a little navigator for the keyframes that goes back and forth between the keyframes. Remember, you have to have the property selected. This is how you can delete a keyframe. Notice there's a minus sign on it. I deleted a keyframe and you can also change the values of a given keyframe using this method. A great use of keyframes is changing effect properties over time. Let's do that now. Important, this only works on effect layers, not effects in layers. So we're adding a liquidity effect to this. Then we send the layer backwards because it's sitting on top of me. And now you'll see that it's a green screen. We want to use that transform feature so that it scales the effect layer to the entire screen. With the effect layer selected, you'll see this properties button and properties are keyframable. So instead of just one setting for the whole length of the effect, it's much more natural to be able to fade it in and out or change other properties over time. I'm gonna do it with keyframes and show you the end result. Because KineMaster brought exactly what I was looking for in KineMaster 7. This is keyframe everything. So what is that? I'm gonna teach you right now. Now for the bad news, as I've made the video, I realized a lot of settings I would like to keyframe can't be done like speed, the settings in text, amount of filter, and there's more. I'm making a full list if you check the description of this video. And with that said, I still think it's an awesome addition for KineMaster 7. I hope that made sense. If you have any questions, put them down below. Remember, you need KineMaster 7 for this to work. Otherwise, get out there and make something awesome with KineMaster. It's your turn. I'll see you the next time.